Harry's wife. Part 96.20 Downward Spiral The Kardashian Move Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Well, I've been focusing on Johnny Depp and Amber Heard as of late, and there's a bit of Kevin Spacey, amongst other things, about narcissism. But of course, there have been some recent events involving the gift that keeps on giving Harry's wife, and therefore it would be remiss of me not to include some of these factors to enable you to understand more about why she behaves the way that she does, and also to continue your understanding about narcissism. A little while ago, the Daily Mail reported as follows in an article by Charlie Langston and Martin Robinson and Mark Duell. Keeping up with the Sussexes, Harry and Harry's wife ask Netflix cameras into their L.A. mansion to film Kardashian-style docu-series so streaming giant can get its pound of flesh from $100 million deal amid fears of more truth bombs before the Queen's Jubilee. Page 6 reports that the Sussexes are filming a docu-series and have let cameras into their $14 million Monty shit show home. It's unclear if Archie and Lilibet were filmed. The publication quoted a producer in the know who said that the timing is still being discussed, but that Netflix chiefs want it to be ready by the end of 2022. According to the insiders, executives at the streaming site want the series to be released around the same time as 37-year-old Harry's upcoming memoir. The docu-series claims will no doubt prompt serious concern in Buckingham Palace over what further allegations they could air against royal family. It comes shortly after Netflix axed 40-year-old Harry's wife's animated series Pearl, amid major cutbacks as a result of plummeting revenue and loss of subscribers. Prince Harry and Harry's wife are filming at an at-home docu-series already branded a royal Keeping Up with the Kardashians for Netflix, who have secured their pound of flesh in return for their $150 million Megxit streaming deal. This, of course, is coming from the individual that claimed that she wanted privacy that she wanted to be able to retreat from royal life and ensure that she could go about being her authentic and organic self with the bananas of empowerment, with the chickens of authenticity, away from prying eyes. I can think of nothing more prying, other than perhaps having a camera sewn into her forehead, for there to be cameras coming into one's home. And therefore, this demonstrates the hypocrisy of Harry's wife, the sense of entitlement to do what she wants, a lack of accountability in, for instance, staying true to what she said that she did in terms of retreating from the royal family. Of course, it comes as no surprise. We have seen repeated behaviours, but once again, it's important to identify what those behaviours are as part of her narcissism. As you know, through narcissistic compartmentalization, at 9 a.m. the narcissist will say, I love you, and then at 9.05 a.m. the narcissist may well say, I hate you. This is because the narcissism will do whatever is required to obtain the prime aims of fuel control, character traits, and residual benefits, and it matters not if there is a volt fast, a 180-degree turn, contrarian behaviors, and hypocrisy. Here, Harry's wife, at the time, asserted control by withdrawal, stating we need our privacy. And then, ever since that point, we've seen repeated examples of where that has not been adhered to, culminating in the ultimate invasion of privacy, namely having a docu-series filmed in your own home. Of course, one is not surprised by that, and it's necessary to try and drum something up to discharge their obligations with regard to the dangling payday of $100 million dollars, After all, the vacuous individual that she is, with no content provision already, means that she has to scramble around. And basically, she isn't creating anything. She's not sitting down and penning an interesting series. She sought to do that with Pearl, and look what happened there. Instead, it's basically, this is my life. Here I am in New York as the bouncing berry of Harlem. Here I am in New York of Chinese Chairman Mao goes on tour. Here I am storming the United Nations. Here I am getting kicked out of the United Nations. 
Here I am at the Harry and Harry's Wife games, I beg your pardon, the Invictus games. Here I am now at home. Basically, the camera following her around doing ordinary things. Fascinating. Of course, her deluded mind believes her causes her to believe that so many people are going to be interested in watching her spouting her usual nonsense and trudging around various places. I can think of thousands of people who'd be far more interesting to see what they're doing rather than her. The Sussexes are said to have welcomed cameras into their $14 million shitshow mansion for a reality-type series that could be in the mould of the Osbournes, although it's not yet known if Harry will play the role of Ozzy. I think it's fair to say that Netflix is getting its pound of flesh, a Hollywood insider in the know about the project claimed to page six. The at-home reality show was pioneered by the Osbournes, which made Ozzy and Sharon the king and queen of reality TV in the noughties. The mantle was then taken on by the Kardashians, who are now in their, good God, 20th season and are worth a collective $1.4 billion. The format would likely suit Harry and Harry's wife, who have demanded control, assertion of control, of course, over their media messaging since emigrating in 2020. But they also demanded privacy, so a reality show has raised eyebrows among royal experts who have suggested it's a paradox. It's not a paradox, it's the hypocrisy of a narcissist. And with just a number of weeks until the Sussexes all fly into the UK for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, the story in the United States will raise anxieties at Buckingham Palace that the couple will use it to fire more transatlantic potshots at the royal family. The Queen's aides are said to have already banned Harry and Harry's wife's camera crews from her palaces as she marks her extraordinary 70-year reign. Well done, Your Majesty. The couple have also been barred from the Buckingham Palace balcony for the changing of the guard on June 2nd. But the Netflix team have been following them since last year, including a trip to New York compared to a royal visit and their trip to The Hague for the Invictus Games in April. Sources suggest that the Sussexes are angling for the docu-series broadcast to be delayed until early next year, around the time Harry is expected to release his tell-all memoir of Potato Prince, where he will likely have another say on Megxit, as well as the Sussexes' claims that an unknown royal was racist uh, towards Archie and Ace neglected his wife when she was suicidal and pregnant revision of history. The timing is still being discussed. Things are up in the air, a producer in the know claimed, adding that the cameras had been rolling at their grand home in Monte Shitcho. Royal expert Angela Levin, author of 2018 book Harry, Conversations with the Prince, that must have been fascinating, said today, Harry wanted privacy and to be ordinary. He also hated cameras, but he's ended up doing an at-home docuseries for Netflix. Does he need to be searched for hidden cameras on Jubilee days? Will he steal the event from the Queen? Australian royal commentator Daniela Elsa said, In only four years, the Sussexes have gone from being global darlings, resoundingly adored with desk drawers full of enterprising plans for charity projects, to reducing themselves to proto-Kardashians. It's bad enough with the Kartrashians and the way that they behave, but imagine that all you can do is mimic the programme style that they have commandeered. How desperate must you be? And, of course, this is quite simply an example yet again of the downward spiral. Yes, of course, they're going to be paid lots of money for this content, but it's hardly highbrow. It's not even middlebrow. It's particularly lowbrow. The at-home docuseries is one of the couple's main media projects after Netflix, whose share price has tumbled after subscribers dropped as the pandemic fizzled out, scrapped Harry's wife's animated show Pearl, about a young girl inspired by Harry's wife, who takes on social injustices while highlighting the work of feminist icons. Oh dear. The Duchess of Sussex is said to be looking for another broadcaster to buy it up. Hello, broadcasters. Save your money. Amid rumours that a reality show was in the offing, Harry's wife's half-sister, Samantha Markle, said last month, they're not the Kardashians. That's comparing apples to oranges. The Kardashians were an American business empire, and everyone knows their bit background. Another Page Six insider described the plans for the docuseries as Netflix getting its pound of flesh from the Sussexes, who have yet to create any real content for the streaming giant, despite signing their lucrative deal with the company in September 2020. 
Imagine if you'd signed up with your employer to be paid a particular salary starting work in September 2020 and you did sweet fuck all and now you find yourself in May 2022. Do you think you'd still be employed by that organisation? No, you would not. And this is just demonstrative of the arrogance of Harry's wife, the sense of entitlement, and, of course, the lack of accountability that goes with that. In the circumstances, the downward spiral continues, and this is demonstrative of the hypocrisy, the race to the bottom, if you will, the fact that Harry's wife, on the one hand, believes herself to be full of all of these charity projects which have gone absolutely nowhere and instead is left in the situation of needing to scrape the bottom of the barrel by behaving like, as Daniela Elsa mentioned, a proto-Kardashian. Very much is grist to the mill of those that want to see her continuing with her downward spiral and this Kardashian move is just simply the narcissism causing her to operate with a sense of entitlement, a lack of accountability, and seeking out the residual benefit that is the money provided by Netflix. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.